It is the Flow Friday Sports Show and the first one for the new year. And it's time to take a look at the Owen Lawn tennis scene with the president of the club there, Paul Dean, who joins me on the line. Great to be with you, Paul. Happy New Year and tell us what you've been getting up to lately. Yeah, good day, Alice. Happy New Year to yourself and to all the listeners out there. And yeah, good to be back. Just, yeah, just enjoying the Christmas festivities and New Year's and whatever and getting back into work and all that. And yeah, slowly getting back into the swing of things. Well, the best part about being a tennis fan around this time is, of course, all those precursors to the Oz Open that we all get to enjoy during that uh, main period of the summer break. Of course, we're all back at work now and trying to catch a glimpse of the Australian Open where we've got a free minute or two. Some might be uh, guilty of taking a few more minutes up here in the Flow FM studios to uh, really absorb the Australian Open action throughout the days at the moment. Uh, Tell us what you've made of the Oz Open so far. Any big surprises for you and who do you think's looking hottest and who do you think might go all the way in the men's and women's? Yeah, really enjoying it so far. Alex Jiminal just had a had a win. Um, yeah, just before as I was watching there, so he's through to the third round and looking the good. Um, yeah, and a few others are singing along nice. Okay, so I just need to clear something up. Are you saying that Jiminal the favourite overall, or just from an Australian perspective? <laughs> yeah, um, oh, well, we wouldn't write off Jiminal. Um, probably not as far as winning the tournament. It would, I think he'll go, you know, fourth round maybe. Quarterfinals, we'll see. But um, yeah, Dimonaro, his way he's playing, he's beaten on his day, he's beating anyone. So yeah, watch out for him. I, I, I would say, yeah. All right, there we go. Some nice insights from you there, Paul. Uh, let's rewind back to late December. We never covered the final round of tennis that was played at the club before the year summer pause. So uh, let's go back there and take a look at the games that were played in round 10. One of those was Cohen v. Timberoo. Give us a lowdown, Paul. Yeah, Colwyn versus Timberoo. At the time going into this match, uh, Colwyn were on top of the ladder and Timberoo were third. Um, yeah, but there was nothing. Uh, there's nothing much between the top three teams in our competition this year. Um, so yeah, for Col- um, uh, sorry, yeah, Colwyn to win, um, have bragging rights over the Christmas break, um, it would have been good for them to get that win and um, yeah, have a few weeks of bragging about being on top of the ladder. But that wasn't to be for them. Um, and Timberoo, we, um, which is my team, we got the upper hand there in um, the first section of the night, the ladies slash mixed, mixed section there, um, with um, yeah an 18 game difference there, 36 to 18 there um, in Timberoo's favour. Uh, the men's section there, a bit of a fight back there for Colwyn, uh, with them getting up in that section by 11 games there, so that made it just a seven game uh, lead in Timberoo's favour going into the into the um, mixed extra double section there. And uh, that ended up finishing at 33 games each. So um, that seven-game margin stayed as it, as it is. And um, with Timberoo winning there by, yeah, seven games. Um, the final scores there, Timberoo 10 sets, 88 games, defeating uh, Colwyn 8 sets, 81 games. Their um, three-set winners there for Timberoo were Carla Grayling, Mackenzie Clark, and four. Kyle won the three set winners there with Scott Brady and Kai Weathers. <clears throat> Tarita v Kaiamal, the other game on that evening, Paul. How did that one pan out? Yeah, Tarita, second team on the ladder versus Kaiamal on the bottom there. Um, and for, for um, yeah, uh, incentive there for Tarita was that they would get top spot if um, Kyle won were beaten in the other match, and that did happen. So a win here for Tarita um, has put them on top there. They did end up winning that match there. Over Kaimel, uh in the uh, first section, the Lady Flash mixed double section. It was um, 27 games each there, so that finished in a tie there. Um, and it was in the men's section there where Tarita got the uh, win there, um, got the handy lead there with a 15 um, game win in the men's section there. So that set them up for the uh, for the night there. And then uh, in the last section, the mixed extra double section there, it was. Um, Tarita once again just getting up there by just two games there, so that made it a 17 game margin uh, in Tarita's favour there. Um, final scores there Tarita 10 sets, 96 games, defeated Kaimel 8 sets, 79 games. Three set winners there were Samuel Mead, Liam Bloom, Kyle O'Brien, and Belinda O'Brien for Tarita. 
and um, Darcy Plant and Zach Charles won their three sets for Kyle Allen. All right. Well, you did make reference to the ladder there before. Tarita on top of the ladder at the moment. Uh, just tell us how that is poised at the moment as we look towards the resumption of the competition in early February. Yeah, as you said, Tarita on top. And um, they're actually the fifth team, or sorry, it's the fifth lead change at the top of the um, ladder for the season. We've had four teams on top of the ladder at various stages. Speed are on top in the. Um, first couple of rounds, then Colwyn got on top and then lost it to Timberoo there for a couple of weeks, and then Colwyn got it back, and now they've lost it again to Tarita. So, yeah, um, five lead changes, four different teams on top of the ladder, and various changes. So, um, looking forward to a very um, interesting final four rounds. Um, we're back on February the 2nd there, so a couple of weeks away. Um, some very interesting matches coming up there, and, um, yeah, we're looking forward to getting back into it. Um, when that comes around. I'm sure you're absolutely itching to get back out there. Uh, Just to some other housekeeping matters, we'll talk about some future tournaments that are coming up in the foreseeable future. And uh, obviously we'll profile these more as we get closer to the commencement of these tournaments. But uh, we've got the club championships on in March and then they will be followed by the Rowan Gregg Memorial Tournament, which will be the 42nd edition of that. Uh, Paul. Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah, first of all, at the club championships is a bit of a lead-in, I suppose you could say, to the um, tournament there. Um, yeah, Samuel Mead and Sophie O'Shaughnessy are our two reigning club champions at the moment there, and um, I'd say they have to be pretty red-hot favourites to win it again there. Samuel's, um, yeah, he's pretty clearly the best men's tennis player in our club there, and um, he'll take a bit of beating. We'll all be trying to beat him, but um, I don't think any of us uh, us um, other players have got quite the game that he has, so um, unless he falls over or something, I'd say he'll, he'll uh, more than likely be um, probably, I think he'd be up to about his fifth club championship, I think, something like that. And as for Sophie, she, yeah, she'll be um, re- um, keen to make it number two. She will, um, has won, as I said, she won it last year, which was her first one, and she'll be keen to make it number two. And yeah, our Rowan Greg Memorial, that's our big weekend, which is... Um, Coming up the following weekend after that, the March the 8th, 9th and 10th, I think it is, which is the Labor Day weekend here in Victoria. Um, big weekend. Uh, we Hopefully you should get around 200 or so entries uh, once again. And, yeah, we're looking forward to putting that on again. And, um, yeah, should be um, yeah, good fun. And uh, just to round things out, Paul, tell us about the working bee you put on uh, last Sunday just gone. A bit stiff to get the people out there to... Uh, do some maintenance out under the sun there in regional Victoria, I'd have thought. Yeah, it is, but unfortunately it's um, three-quarter jacks, as we call them around here. That is absolutely um, prime growing conditions um, for them this summer around um, this area here in the Mallee. Rain, humid weather and all that, and they're um, yeah, kind of out of control on the, um, around the courts. We're up there spraying them and chipping them and whatever. Trying to, our best to keep them under control. I was actually up there again this afternoon trying to yeah, do a bit more spraying. Um, yeah, what we missed last week, and you'd barely notice we did it. I think last week, just, <laughs> they just keep um, reappearing. You think you've um, got them all, you're on top of them, and then you go back um, five or six days later, and it's like you never <laughs> done it before. So, yeah, um, a necessary work and be. But, yeah, good turnout for that. We only had, um, I was, we probably had seven or eight people come along, and only an hour, hour and a half, and uh, we had the job done. So, yeah, well done to those that turned up. There you go. The elements are keeping you on your toes just as much as the tennis is these days, Paul. Good to catch up with you. We'll speak to you again soon as we look ahead to that February restart for Owen Lawn Tennis. Thanks so much for your time, Paul. Take care. Yep, you too. Thanks, Alice. Yep, we'll talk to you next week.